Welcome to the Ignited Recovery Podcast, a new way forward for anyone looking for answers but feeling left out. If you've been searching for empowerment, triumph, and purpose, you've found them right here. You won't hear the same solutions and you're not going to have any excuses to fall back on because Ignited Recovery allows heroes to rise and become their best selves. I'm Dr. Adi Jaffe, and I can't wait to be your guide on this journey. Are you ready to become an Ignited Hero? We've all been hearing about the microbiome and how important it is for our health. It's kind of funny, right? Only 10 years ago, we believed that killing the bacteria on everything was the way to go. I mean, do you remember those sanitizer sprays everywhere? And now we're gradually learning that, surprise, surprise, not really, we actually need the bacteria around us to thrive and even survive. The thing is that everybody's been focusing almost exclusively on the bacteria in your body that helps you digest food. And that is really important Because if you can't digest it, you can't live off of the nutrients and then you develop all sort of GI problems and you have to, never mind. But research has been showing us an incredible connection between bacteria in your gut and your mental health. Seriously. For instance, studies have shown that the bacteria in the gut of an animal can change its level of depression. And more and more research is coming out showing that the same exact thing probably plays a role in anxiety, depression, maybe even autism and ADHD. Isn't that amazing? So I did some research and I decided to add a probiotic mix that helps not only mood, but also the communication between my gut and the brain. It's called Amare and their wellness kit takes care of everything that I need. The probiotics that have been researched to provide actual tangible help and the prebiotics and everything that those bacteria need to thrive and do their work. I've been using it myself for three months and I gotta say, it's really helped regulate my mood and keep me even. And it's helping me feel less foggy too, especially in the morning. Look, these guys really did their research and this stuff is top notch. If you wanna get it for yourself, just follow the link in our show notes and you can join the Mind Biome Revolution with me. All right, everybody, welcome to this episode of the Ignited Recovery Secrets podcast. Uh, I've got a fun little experiment here today. Um, I did something I've never done before. I took somebody I admire, somebody whose work I think is important. That person is Gary V. And uh, I kind of dug up 10 principles that I found, 10 of my favorite principles of his that I thought I could turn around and talk about how those same principles apply to the work that we do here, the recovery work, the help in making people create their best life, not in business, but just in life in general. So I hope that sounds fun to you. If you like any of these concepts, do me a favor, screenshot them, tag me um, at Dr. D. Jaffe, tag Gary, because I'm sure he'd like to see it too. And you know, Gary's one of those people who's just a no bullshit kind of going hard guys who just created a massive name for himself in social media and video and the online world. And I think there's a lot that a lot many of us can learn from him. And I try to do the same thing in myself. And so, like I said, I picked up 10 of those principles and I just want to get right into it. Sound good? All right. So principle number one and one of his biggest things is hustle. Uh, Gary says, hustle is the number one controllable factor of personal success. You know, you might not be the smartest, the best looking, the um, the best muscled or, you know, the most fit person around. But if you put the work in and put it in repeatedly and over time, you're going to end up having success. Um, you know, if you don't have time, just get up earlier. Try not don't waste your time on things that you don't care about and put the time that you need into it. You know, I, I like this a lot. A lot of times when people register or want to register for some of the work that I do, they tell me I don't have the time to do this. And we all know that we all have the exact same amount of time in the day. I've got three kids, a business, and um, you know, and all of these things that I do on a regular basis, plus exercise, sleep, etc. We all get the same time. You never lost time. You don't have to find it. You just have to make time. You have to make time for the things that are important in your life. And what I tell people all the time is one of the ways to do that is get clear 
on why it is that you really care about this change. Understand what your motivation is, and then make the time. Remove time from other things that are not as important in your life. Move forward in a really deliberate way. I can almost guarantee that the more time you dedicate to your goal, the more likely you are to be successful. All right, so that's principle number one. Number two, bet on your strengths. Triple down on what you're good at and ignore the rest. Man, you know, Gary says that self-awareness is one of the keys to life, and that's true. The people who have success, the people who do really well in life, get really clear on what they're good at, kind of like their genius zone, right? And they focus in on that with laser focus. They try to do as little else in life other than that thing that they're so good at, the things that they're best at. Unfortunately, when people struggle with addiction or mental health, they typically actually do the opposite. They focus only on their weaknesses. Now, here's the thing, everybody has weaknesses. Nobody is perfect. It's not like you're special in having weaknesses. I have them, Gary has them, uh, Barack Obama has them, and your next door neighbor has them. The job here is to stop at least only paying attention to those strengths, ignore them to the best of your ability and or get other people who do better work than you do in those areas to do that and start really giving credit to celebrating and employing your own strengths in your day-to-day life. All right, number three is patience. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Um, Look, we're all playing a long game. It's called life. Years worth of days and hours and minutes strung together, right? But so many of us think in the short term. We think about, you know, reaching a goal next week or reaching a goal tomorrow or in a month. Uh, Gary talks a lot about the idea of just putting your head down and working day in and day out. And then years later, you'll have success. He jokes a lot of times about the fact that, you know, he's an overnight success that started like 15 years ago when uh, nobody knew what YouTube was and nobody knew what any of those, um, you know, kind of um, high level tools that we use now in social media were. And he was just making just, you know, rudimentary work at his father's wine shop. Learn, do the work day by day, day and after day. Whether you're young or old, that's what it's going to take anyway. So understand that it's a marathon. Start thinking in long term. Uh, It's a really good corollary to the 1% principle I recently talked about, right? Everybody wants to have massive success in three weeks. Like take their business from zero to a million dollars in the next six months. That's great. But while some people do that magically and it's amazing and all the more power to them, many people grind it out at what I look at as little 1%, 2% improvement increments. And the thing is that doing 1% better than you did last month sounds like nothing, but you start accruing those together and you get massive differences. Uh, In the um, podcast that I talked about earlier, you you string away a day by day improvement of 1% a day, which sounds like nothing, and a year later, you're performing at 37 times what you were a year earlier. Start thinking about the long-term changes. Don't only go for the short-term successes. Uh, Number four, go take that chance, right? Go gamble, do the thing that seems like it's out of reach. Too many people are scared of going for something they want because of the fear of failure. Well, guess what? If you don't go for it, you're gonna fail 100% of the time. And I don't care how unlikely success is if you do try or how unlikely you believe that success is if you do try. Guaranteed, that success percentage is better than zero. Plus, and more importantly, in my opinion, you get to show yourself the failure is not really all that scary. We all fail. It might sting for a minute. You might not like the way it feels, the moment of failure, but it's gonna teach you that you can try and survive to the other side. And what's important about that is the next time there's an amazing opportunity that can come up, you're gonna be ready and well-practiced. All right, um, principle number five from him is ideas of shit, execution is everything. First of all, I love that Gary swears all the time because I do too. Um, Gary talks about this idea concept in the context of business ideas. And he says, you know, forget about being all secretive with your ideas, share them, be an open book, be an idea machine and share the wealth and help get other people to help you execute so that your ideas become something because they don't mean anything by themselves. I'm gonna shift this a little bit and talk about the importance of this for sharing your shadows. When your faults and your fears are stuck in your head and they just sit there by 
yourself in your head with all that fear and all the, the skeletons, they actually get amplified. They become even scarier than they would be otherwise. Get them out of there. Talk to other people that you can trust about some of the scariest shit that happens in your head and see the sunshine flood in. I can't tell you the number of times that people who reach out to me on Facebook tell me that just sharing with me some of their darkest secrets has helped them already. Well, don't wait for me. Don't wait for somebody big. Go do the work and share it with people who are close to you so that you can actually experience success in your life and stop hiding in the closet. Uh, one of his other principles is that of uh, jab, 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 and right hook. The idea here is give and give and give. Don't keep looking for something in return. Give and give, and when you're ready, you'll be able to receive, you'll be able to drop that right hook for anything that you want. Uh, and in the meantime, it's the way Gary talks about it, it's the mark of an amateur to try to close the deal on a first interaction. Always keep providing value to others before you ask them in return. Um, I think this is huge, and a lot of people that I talk to who struggle, they look for the help without providing the value. Now, this goes right with the next one, which I'm gonna talk about here together. So concept number seven, when you give with expectation in return, you lose. Many of the people that I work with, self-care is one of the first steps that they need. And this goes back to the last principles. If you or the people you love have neglected yourself for so long, because sometimes you're not even sure that you're worth being taken care of, you've got to get in there. You've got to get enough capital, enough resources for yourself to be able to take care of other people. But once your oxygen mask is on, once you're capable, contributing to others' well-being should be like a mantra that you repeat to yourself regularly. Why? Because it's good for the people you help and it's good for you to be good, period. So be kind in your relationships because the person you want to be, the person who is good and who doesn't have stress and who feels good about their life and doesn't keep score would do that. That's how they would behave. And if you start doing that, even when you don't have a shit ton of self-care capital because you're contributing to others, I find that is one of the easiest ways to feel more positive about your own status in life. When you start doing that, you notice that you're okay. And you give to others because you're not afraid that giving to others is gonna take away from you. You understand that giving to others will actually grow the overall good and you will get to benefit in it the same way as others. And if you go back to that past principle, once you do that overall in your life, when you give freely to others, when you help on a regular basis the people around you, you will end up finding that when you need support, they're there for you as well. So those two work together. Principle number eight, the biggest tell that somebody is a loser is complaining. You know this, you know that people who complain or people who talk shit just suck the life out of a room. Uh, you've also heard the saying that we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. So don't waste your time with people who suck the energy out of you. And I've got an add on to this, don't be the kind of person who talks shit about others. If there are people in your life that you want to complain about, you have some thinking to do. Either get them out of your life or confront the shit that's making you complain about them. And do that with them. Don't confront that shit with other people. The relationships you have in your life are the key to your happiness. And you are in control of making them good, bad, or non-existent. So take that responsibility really seriously. Number nine, ignore the opinion of others. I deal with this all the time with the people that I work with because of past interactions or maybe imagined past interactions of what others think about you, what they told you, what they say you should do or what they think you're worth or where you're going, you and other people around you have stopped yourselves from doing what makes you truly happy or what you get ignited by or what makes you feel good. And sometimes it even has robbed you of the feeling that you have the right to be happy. I deal with a lot of people with trauma and this is so common. Stop caring about what everybody else thinks about you or what you're doing. This is your life. Get people around you whose opinion you trust and start doing what's right for you. Not only can you not please everybody, but you shouldn't have to. This is your life and you have to construct it in a way that makes you happy. Because if you live your life happily, you get to not live somebody else's life miserably. 
your parents, your friends. You don't have to live the life that makes them happy. You have to live the life that makes you happy. And if you stop constantly taking in information from other people about what they think you should do, you can, that can go a long way. Now, if you go and listen to my episode about you know, testing your truth, I think these kind of go hand in hand uh, and can be helped together. So not necessarily always taking on other people's opinions of you, but also helping to rely with other people on what it is that's happening in your life and as a good judge of that. Last but not least, number 10, stop looking back. It's fucking with your neck. Uh, have you ever sat around just regretting something that you've done in the past? Has that thing ever held you back so strongly that literally debilitated you from doing something that you really want now to make your future better? Look, it's really hard to walk forward when you're constantly looking back. I dare you, try it right now. Try just walking forward while cranking your neck back. Really, really difficult, so stop doing it. Understand your past mistakes, learn from them, and then put one foot in front of the other while looking ahead. Uh, I've told the story, I believe, of the motorcycle example that I use a lot for this sort of um, thing exactly in my work. And that is when I learned how to ride a motorcycle, they told us, stop looking down at the ground when you turn. If you keep looking down at where um, you are right now, let alone backwards, your motorcycle will lean towards there and then you will find yourself on the ground. Look at where you're going at the end of the turn you're making and you will be much, much safer and get there in one piece. This is huge for a lot of people. A lot of people get stuck in their past and make that the reason why they're so debilitated from moving into the future. All right, so those were my 10 favorite, there are a lot more, but my my 10 favorite concepts from Gary Vee's work that I think we can take and apply to recovery. I hope you like them. I think I'm gonna do some more of these things. Let me know if you do like them. Share on Instagram, again, screenshot this, tag me and Gary Vee, and uh, learn from these principles, start employing them in your life, and let's get better. Thank you all for tuning in. See you next week. Don't forget to give us um, reviews on iTunes. You know you love it. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to the Ignited Heroes Recovery Podcast. I really hope you found the information here useful and that we'll see you back here next week. And look, I want to make sure that this podcast is the most useful it can be for you. So please let me know by emailing info at ignited.com if there are any specific topics or questions you'd like to have addressed. As usual, if you like this episode, I would love for you to leave us a five-star review and rating. Thanks, and see you next week.